for those of you sticking around for the whole video please hit that like share subscribe really helps us grow today we take a look at none other than bryson dechambeau and i've this has been requested a couple of times and the reason i didn't do it is because everybody in the mama's doing something on bryson dechambeau but i thought how can we do it a little bit differently so i pulled up an old collegiate clip of his and his current golf swing we're going to look at things he changed and the most notable thing you can see right away is the speed of his golf swing has increased some 25 percent and that's quite unusual for somebody to do but we'll take a look at why he did that what his cause and effect is now versus where it was and then we'll also look at his down the line and face on of his newest golf swing and take a look at how he manipulates the golf ball and the club shaft in ways that few can do so stay with me if you do like this hit that like share subscribe but let's get going So just as we talked about in the intro, we're going to look at the overall tempo of Bryson's swing. And we can see the one on the right is a newer version of his swing. One on the left is when he was in his college days. One on the left is a little bit more fluid, a little bit slower. One on the right is just an all-out lashing. And including with that is his overall speed. Now keep in mind, Bryson has put on some 50 pounds between two of these videos. And he's definitely working out to create a lot of power at impact. And he doesn't necessarily do it by rotating he is actually doing it by stealing ground force and we'll go more into this when we do a comparison when i can sync these videos up correctly but i thought that would be a cool little introduction but let's go down to more detail let's put these videos side by side let's sync them up as best as we can and talk about the differences that we not only see but the reasons behind his differences Okay, so I've rearranged the videos. I put my fat head right in the middle, but we're going to look at a couple things in setup and we're going to draw some plane lines here so we can still see that he is very one plane like. And look how tight that secondary plane line is and the primary plane line on both these videos where you don't have a lot of space to work with, but there's positives and negatives to that. But the biggest thing I do see is the spacing between his knees and his golf ball in terms of his flexion of his knees. And we see the older setup, we see a more traditional knee bend. With a newer setup, we don't see a lot of knee bend, so he's basically just standing very tall with his lower body. What I'm trying to explain is this area here, we can see there's a lot more real estate between the knees and his golf ball. Now this will play an important part and his motion specifically right at impact because we see the old swing is a little bit more rotational through impact with a newer swing is a little bit more tilty but it's more up and down with his legs and the leg drive is where he gets a lot of his club head speed paired with how he holds his triangle to get a longer on the newer motion and we'll see a longer arm position and a little bit more steeper because of that so let's take a look at a couple of plane lines here let's draw this in Barney Purple because you know Barney Purple's got to make an appearance on um, Bryson DeChambeau. I mean, why would there not be a Barney Purple? And we see these angles, they look a little bit different. So what we're going to do is get a quick little angle tool out here and look at the forward bend. Now, I know that this is not exactly correct, but it's going to give us a basic idea of those angles. So we do see they're fairly close. We're going to just say they're about the same, even though they don't look about the same. It could be a camera angle issue. And I think what's giving that illusion is the knee bend. It's a little bit straight on the right side, which kind of gives it a little bit more of a, a look like his upper body's bending over, which it really isn't. But what we're going to draw is let's draw a back brace line just to see how well he stays against that back brace line. Okay, so we know we got a tighter plane line on the left side, a little bit more room to work with on the right side and we take that club back and these won't be synced up because the newer swing is much quicker but we can start to look at some things that they do correctly so we take a look at the hands they're both writing out the plane line we can see the one on the right side however the club head is going to be tighter to the plane line than on the one on the left side and by that i mean look at the club is back over here while his hands are on the plane line and the new one we take a look the hands are on the plane line the club is actually closer to the plane line which is a good thing now how he's a accomplishing this is look at the arm position look how the arms on the right side are moving away from his body as he is holding his triangle where the one on the left side is starting to move towards the body as his right elbow is pulling back and this is key because it has to do with the width of arc now when you can hold your arms nice and away from your chest and you can turn really around your chest you need to stand taller to do this so the one on the right side that's one of the reasons why he is standing a bit taller with his legs to allow him to 
tilt on his posture and get that turn to be more connected, to be wider. So the width is what really helps him out. Plus speed. I mean, you look at how much faster he swings. Width and speed is always your friend. And he's also going to be moving up and down. So we take a look at, let's go to about three quarters of the way back on the left side. And we can already see the right arm. Look at the right arm is folding closer to the, to the body where the right arm here is folding further away. So we get a wider position here versus here. It's starting to get a little bit tucked. Now, not to say either one of them is bad because he was a phenomenal golfer on the left side and a phenomenal golfer on the right side, but his goals are a bit different now. He just wants to pound the golf ball, and who wouldn't if you could? We can see that right leg is straightening out. The right leg on the older swing ha does have that slight bend. That's a horrible bend, by the way. Let me redo that to gain myself. That's probably even worse, so let's redo that again, and we'll get it third time's the charm. There we go. So we see that he's still getting a little bit of flexion as he is turning. As he gets to the top of the swing, though, we'll see a big difference. So look at the right side. Arms are much higher. Now remember, why are they higher? Because of the right arm position. The right elbow is not tucked into his body as much on the left side we see here versus the right side we see it getting more vertical and it's getting up and that's because of the width of arc now what this will do is we'll give him a more up and down motion with his arms which is good because remember how he needed to create more clearance room with his knees this is one of the reasons because he is no longer tucked to his body and rotating you don't need a lot of clearance down below but if you're up and down you better have some clearance room to allow your hands and arms to tilt under which is now he's getting more tilty and less turny i don't even know if that's those words but you know they sound pretty cool so we have a very steep versus very flat in comparison I'm not saying they're steep or flat, but in comparison to each other. Now, let's take a look at that first move down. So we see both moves. Look at the one on the right side. The arms now are going to drop down versus the one on the left side. They're not necessarily going to drop down. They're just going to stay on that plane. So how we know this is let's draw the triangle check. And this, again, is not exact, but it is close enough for government work. And this is why it is very important with the right elbow, how it folds and tucks the body. It's going to affect your triangle work. So we're going to look at the long lines is basically what's, what's going to tell you where the hands should go down. Now, the one on the right side is going to be more vertical because he extended his takeaway, meaning he has that nice wide arc because he created more room in the bottom. Let's take a look at the right screen first. So close your left eye and just look at the right side. Look at those hands. See how the hands go dropping down below that, which is phenomenal. Now... Close your right eye, look at the left side, and let's see those hands that are going down those lines. So you can see how one will cause the other. So we have the left one, which is a little bit more shallow. It is on that lower plane quicker. The right one's not necessarily in the lower plane quicker with the shaft. You can see the shaft now still has to redirect and come back around. So let's look at what happens from this point on. And now I want you to pay very close attention to the body. The body is going to tell you the difference here. Look at the left side first. We're going to see the body pull back and rotate. You see how the whole body rotates. Watch it back and forth. Close your eye. Don't look at the right side. Just your left side. Look how that body just keeps rotating. Rotating. So we have a lot of rotation because he's on that plane line. He can just go ahead and rotate. Now, look at the right side. Watch the body. Do you see less rotation? And if you don't, I'll point it out. But what you see is more tilting. So he is now tilting more and turning less. The one on the left side, he is turning more and tilting less, all because of the width of, width of arc and the arms going up and down. So let's start out with the left side and let's draw that brace line here and watch the whole body right at impact. We got him synced up at impact. That's perfect, Never mind. We got it all synced up. So let's look at this position at impact. Let me show you the turning on the left side. So we see hips are turning. We also see the shoulders turning, but let's draw that tilt. So there's the tilt at impact. Uh, right side of the screen, we see the hips are still turning, not as much though. And look at the tilt on the right side. So we see more tilt. Now, what is going to be affected with this is the hand path. When you have tilt at impact, your hand path usually veers off slightly right of your target. When you have turn at impact, your hand path veers off slightly left of the target. So let's clean up the green line so we don't get so confused. And let's look at the es escape pattern so we see on the left side boom there goes the club shaft right in between we see on the right side there goes the club shaft a little bit higher so we see the higher oh what happened to my computer there we go we see the higher because tilt and now what we see is as we come on through we'll see which one is going to be higher as they finish now higher let's clean up all these lines let's look at the 
amount of bend he has this way. Well, the one on the left side, because it was more rotational, he was able to stay in his posture longer because he's on plane a little bit more traditional like and he's able to finish with that slight tilt down the new motion because a remember he started a little bit straighter here but b because he is tilting and his hands pull up higher that's going to pull you up and get you more in an upright position when you follow through but regardless let's look at this does this create a t on his spine yes it does does this create a t on his spine yes it does so essentially all he has done is change the way his spine is now tilting then turning as opposed to turning and tilting he's changed the order around but he's done it in a really good way because he's using the ground effectively now let's just take a look let's zoom in a little bit more here and now what i want you to do is look at the knees up to his belt and i want you to watch as he strikes a golf ball so the left side we can see that the hips still turn right before he gets down to impact it still has a little bit more turn you can see the back pocket on the right side is clear over versus the back pocket on the right side here so we definitely don't see as much turn now i know it's minute but this does play a big part Okay, so I want you to watch this slow motion over and over again. First, look at the left side. Look at the footwork and look at the knee height. So the knee height doesn't necessarily change. There's not a lot of upward push as he strikes a golf ball as his hips are rotating around stable knees because if he had push, those hips would not be stable. On the right side, we see that the legs are going up as he strikes the golf ball as a result that's going to help him tilt more under and also stop his knee turn past impact so we see here there's not a lot of hip and knee turn past impact and if we take a look at the way the feet are as you strike the golf ball look at how much weight is on the right side and we'll see that this position from the back left heel straight up to the sky versus this position on the back left heel straight up to the sky, we can see less body is over the left side of it. Now, this could be a slight camera issue. You can clearly see that there is a bowing shape going on here versus here there's less bowing. It is more just up and down. So he's creating pillars out of his legs and tilting more under the pillars because of all that space space work that he has provided himself space work what is that all that space that he provided himself between the club shaft and his knees was key you could not swing with that tilting on the left side things would just crash into each other let's take a look from down the line so i'm not sure exactly i've looked at bryce's swing from face on sometimes he sets up like this sometimes he sets up with less forward press but most of the time i see him set up like this so we're just going to go with this one and i don't know what type of shot he's hitting so keep that in mind this could be a specialty shot but the reason i'm putting this down there to show you is the amount of forward press that he establishes pre-impact because this is pretty vital for you to look at because i know that most of you watching this get this idea to forward press but what this is going to do is it's going to create a little bit of havoc unless you can do something now keep in mind most of us golfers we try to add loft to the club and we do this by falling back either you are having a driver without enough loft so you learn to fall back to try and hit the ball up which is why it's important for ball position so most of us should have our golf ball position out in our left foot specifically if you've got this type of setup because then your club shaft would just meet that left ball position it's a lot easier to maintain that and strike the golf ball with our habits and we don't really play much as these guys and girls but the key thing i want you to look at is where's that golf ball 90 degrees related to a shoulder tilt so we're going to get our trusty tilting tool here and we're going to look at where is 90 degrees so i'm just going to guess let's see if that's a good guess wow look at that that's a pretty good guess it's right on 90 degrees so his golf ball is actually connected slightly outside of his tilting at address now what can help the line get closer to the center is either less tilt or move that golf ball up towards the left foot and then it would be closer to the center which is where you or i should be focusing on so the more four press you have the more this golf ball is going to work out in this region and that's not a good place to be for the average golfer you want to get that golf ball connected more to your chest and this is all done by setup but obviously these guys and girls 
are professionals. They do it for a living, so they've figured out a way to do it. Now, if this was you or I, we'd be falling back to try and add loft because right now he has taken off some loft of his driver. This could be by plan. But let's take a look as he gets down into impact. We know that he does a really good job of turning at the top of his swing. Not only is he just turning around that right hip, but look at this amount of shoulder turn. It's ridiculous how much shoulder turn he actually gets. And right at the top, right there, look at the shoulders. They are almost facing us. You can see that logo on his middle of his shirt. It's almost in the middle of his shirt facing us. So this is an extreme amount of shoulder turn. Now keep that in mind. He is not turning his hips, relatively speaking, as much as his shoulders. Not even close. So this might be a 3 to 1 right ratio as opposed to a 2 to 1 ratio like you or I can do. Or even some of us, 1.5 to 1, where the amount of shoulder turn is more than the hip turns. Keep in mind he has a lot of X factor. He is 50 pounds stronger than he was and most of it is just raw muscle and he is very very flexible something that is very rare to be strong and flexible so keep this in mind now as he strikes and he comes on through we see him drop in that slot a little bit and we see him come on up and this is where he starts to see that ground force now he's going to come on up but he's also going to increase his tilt so as we strike the golf ball here let's look at his new tilting and draw this in let's draw it in yellow so we see the tilting has increased slightly. It has moved closer to the target, but it's also increased, which will then allow his hands to catch up to the center of his tilt. And now what we do is redraw his tilting. So we're going to draw it in red and right there's his tilting. Now, you know what's cool about this? Where does his tilting intersect in the relation to the golf ball? Right here. Okay, so that's that intersecting point. That's where they're trying to rock around. Now, it's very important because that's relative to the golf ball. It's not relative to the center of your chest. It's where is it tilting relative to the golf ball. And if we take a look at impact, now we draw a straight line from where they were rocking straight down into impact. We can see that he has now impacted that golf ball off of his left shoulder. So when he started off, the golf ball was off his right shoulder. And when he struck it, the golf ball shifted to his left shoulder. I hope that makes sense based on the tilting relative to that forward press. So the forward press is everything. If you can tilt according to that forward press, you're okay. You can get away with it. But if you cannot tilt according to that forward press and get some spine increase, you might be in some issues. Hopefully that all makes sense to you. And if not, just let me know in the comments down below. But I hope you did enjoy this about Bryson DeChambeau. Let me know in the comments below if this makes sense to you, if it doesn't make sense to you, if this is just a waste of time. But I hope it wasn't because it's all about free education. And you can't really complain about free education, can you? Hope that helps you. See you next time. Ferris and Grease, don't forget. For those of you sticking around for the whole video, please hit that like, share, subscribe. It really helps us grow. Ferris and Greens.